Hi. Now, in this video, what I want to do is continue the work that we looked at with displacement time graphs and velocity time graphs. You might remember that we use these variables S, U, V, A and T to represent displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration and time respectively. And when a particle is moving with constant acceleration, what I want to show you in this video is that we can develop these formulae here, often referred to as the SUVAT equations. And they're very important because we're going to be looking at using one or more of these equations. And in each equation, you'll notice that one of the variables, S, U, V, A or T, is missing from it. Like, for instance, in this first one, you can see that this equation doesn't have the letter S in, and this one doesn't have T in, and I'm sure you can work out what happens in these ones. So we're going to find that we're going to have problems that are going to use these equations where we know some of the variables and we need to calculate another variable. So the aim of this is just to show you how we go about proving these equations. But generally, I would encourage you to learn them. Now, if we start by looking back at velocity time graphs, which I discussed in an earlier tutorial, where V is the velocity and T is the time. And if we had a particle moving with constant acceleration, we saw that if the initial velocity was u and the final velocity was v, and over this period of time t, we were to work out the displacement, then what we could do was to take the mean velocity, that would be u plus v, divide it by 2, and if we took that mean velocity and multiplied by that interval of time t, it gave us the displacement. And I also pointed out that you might recognize this formula here where we do the sum of the parallel sides, divide it by 2 and times by the distance apart. This represents the area of a trapezium. So the area underneath the graph represented the displacement. Now this is a very important formula that we're going to be using. So I'm just going to number this one, number one, okay? And the other thing that we've talked about is acceleration. Acceleration is a measure of the rate of change of velocity. So if we're looking at acceleration here, A, then if it's the rate of change of velocity, that's the difference in velocity, that would be V minus U, and it's divided by the time to give us that rate of change. And you might recognize that this is the gradient on this graph here. V minus U is this distance up here, and T is this distance across here. And so dividing the vertical height by this horizontal height gives us the gradient. So acceleration can be represented as gradient on a velocity time graph. Now this is a very important equation. If I was to rearrange it by multiplying both sides by t, I would end up with at equals v minus u. And then if I add u to both sides, I would end up making v the subject, which gives me v equals u plus a t. And can you see that that equation here is this top one? I'm going to call that number two. Also, can you notice that this equation here is in the bottom? So already I've established two of these equations. Now, what I want to do next is establish the other equations. What I'll do is I'll just first of all border this off, okay, so it just gives us a little bit more room. But now what I want to do is start by substituting equation 2 into equation 1. So just write a note here that we'll sub equation 2 into 1, okay? And if we do that, 
what we end up with is S equaling U plus, instead of V, it's going to be another U plus AT. So we've got U plus another U plus AT. That's all divided by 2, and we multiply that by T. And if we simplify what we have in the bracket here, and expand out, we've got 2u times the t, so we've got 2ut, and then we've got plus at squared. And that's all divided by 2. And what I can do now is divide both of the terms by 2 here, and I end up with s equaling ut plus a half at squared. And you'll notice that that is another one of these equations, this one here. All right, so just underline that there. Let's move on and we'll try and see if we can get another equation. This time, what I want to do is develop this equation here. Let's say we make u the subject. In other words, all I need to do is take at from both sides and we end up with u equaling v minus at. And I'll just call this equation 2a. All right. So what I'm going to do now is do much the same as what I did here. I'm going to substitute 2a into equation 1. And if we do that, what we end up with is, again, something very similar. s equals, now, instead of u, it's going to be v minus at. And then we plus the v that we've got here. It's all divided by 2 and multiplied by t. And again, if you expand the bracket out and group the v's together, you've got 2v times the t, so you've got 2vt. You've also got minus at squared. And that's all divided by 2. And just as we did before, divide each of the two terms here by 2 and you end up with vt minus a half at squared. Okay, and you can see that that is this equation here. All right, so we'll underline that. I might as well underline these two because we've already established that those two were equations used here and here. So, just got to get one more equation, and you most probably can guess what I'm going to do here. What I'm going to do is take this equation here and now make t the subject. If I do that, we end up with t equaling v minus u, and that's all divided by a. And I'm going to call that equation 2b. All right. So what I'm going to do now is substitute equation 2b into equation 1. All right. And so what we get this time is that therefore s equals u plus v over 2. But when it comes to timesing by t, we just substitute 2b in there. So we end up with v minus u, and that's all divided by a. And when it comes to expanding this out, we end up with s equals, this is essentially the difference of two squares. It turns out to be v squared minus u squared, and it's all divided by 2a. And if I multiply both sides by 2a and make v squared the subject, I end up with v squared equaling u squared plus 2as. And that is our final equation, okay? The one that we have here. So, what have we got? We've got these equations which we're going to be using later on in questions. Each one of them leaves out a particular variable. Do try and learn these, but all I've done here is just present you then with how we go about proving them. So I hope that's been okay for you, and uh, do subscribe if you want to keep uh, up to date with all the videos that I keep uploading. Okay?